The Build Show is on the road today. Not only on the road, but on vacation. That's right, I'm on my family vacation. I have traveled in my Chevy with my RV and all six of my family members from Texas all the way up here to Montana. And we are just a few miles from the Canadian border. And I thought on the Build Show today, I'd give you a tour of this gorgeous building behind me. This is the Many Glaciers Hotel. Originally built in 1915 with private money. This is now owned by the National Park Service. But this is a really cool hotel. And you know, as my friend Brent Hall would say, these old buildings usually have two things to teach us. Number one, we're gonna learn some lessons from these old builders that we can probably apply to new construction. And number two, we're gonna see some really beautiful craftsmanship and encourage us to build our new buildings with this type of craftsmanship. Today's build show on the road from Glacier National Park. Let's get going. Hey guys, I just got a fantastic tour from the concierge of the hotel and I've got some great facts and figures, but also some really cool details to point out. Now, first off the park uh, or we're in Glacier National Park, but this hotel, Many Glaciers Hotel, built with private money, Great Northern Railroad, and the builder was Lewis Hill, built and completed in July 4th of 1915. Totally private money, the railroad built this, expecting uh, patrons, check out this, <laughs> as I'm talking about 1915, check out this old vehicle. This looks like a National Park Service vehicle from back in the day. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyways, massive renovations happened though. Apparently the building uh, was in such bad disrepair uh, like 15, 20 years ago that uh, an unnamed parks service person said, there's two tools that we need to fix the hotel. We need a gallon of gasoline and three matches and that'll fix the hotel. The whole building listed apparently a foot towards the lake on the other side. And eventually uh, Congress stepped in and allocated some serious money. $43 million was spent here over the course of nine years in seven phases of construction. They worked on structural, they, they worked on life safety health first, uh, and then you're gonna see later that they worked on some beautification later that wasn't originally in that budget. Uh, so, some really cool stuff though, but apparently roof was replaced, windows and doors were replaced on the outside, insulation was added, all those things were upgraded. Let's go take a tour of the inside and let's take a look. But actually, before we go in real quick, I do want to point out uh, the building really is the way it looked when it was built, minus a few small details. Like for instance, this roof that you're seeing here, this is a new roof. I don't know what it is. They didn't know. It looks to me like it might be zinc. I'm not totally sure, but it's certainly a metal shingle of some variety. And it certainly mimics what this um, probably cedar shake roof looks like here on the uh, entrance cupola and porta cochere but I absolutely love that I would love to put that in a house someday isn't that beautiful it's also going to add some fire resistance to this hotel which is all wood on the outside and wood construction on the inside and you're going to notice some some definite upgrades to the sprinkler system hey guys sorry to interrupt the video I'm back from vacation it was thoroughly epic Unfortunately, I had to drop the stash though. My wife was not into it, kind of a bummer. But hey, I'm interrupting because I wanted to tell you about something. Uh, my company that I own, Build Productions, that's the company that runs my YouTube channel and buildshownetwork.com, which is my videos and several other contributors. We're growing and we're looking to hire someone. I'm actually looking for somebody uh, that is both proficient at editing and is good at social media to help run our social media outlets and uh, edit both my videos and our contributors' videos. Ideally, this is a person based out of Austin, Texas. You could potentially work remote on this as well. Anyways, I'll have a email address in the description. If this is something you're interested in or you know of somebody, check out that uh, email address below. We'd love to have you on the team. All right, back to today's video. Okay, so the outside of the building, so much to see here. Just really pretty. It definitely looks like a Swiss chalet kind of theme here. I love these beautiful railings. My assumption is that these have probably rotted. This is all new wood. None of that's probably original, but I wouldn't be surprised if those brackets that you're seeing up there maybe are original to the building 100 years ago. They're, they're pretty well protected up there, kind of tucked in underneath the eaves. And you're also seeing this really cool 
headpiece and this window trim. I'm assuming this is original siding, but it's hard to say. I saw that in the renovation, windows, roofing, all those things have been replaced uh, when the renovation was completed about five years ago in 2017. Let's go inside and take a look, shall we? Listed building. All right, so the first thing you notice when you first walk in here, gorgeous lobby, giant lobby. Look at this place. So Lewis Hill was the original builder. This was built with private money, and it's the Great Northern Railroad that actually built this and had the money for this. The idea and the theme here when you first walk in was that you're still in the forest. Look at these giant columns that are all structural with light coming from the ceiling. I don't know if those are skylights original, maybe they have skylights back then. And check out this big old open fire pit with a feeling like you were camping with your friends. Underneath the carpet is supposedly some three inch hardwoods that got covered up just because they didn't have the money to make those restored and looking beautiful again. That's kind of sad. But they, they focused on structure when they did this. Apparently the building listed 12 inches uh, out of plumb towards the water and they brought it back 10 inches and then spent a ton of money on piers and foundation and steel uh, downstairs at the basement level but this looks like it was all restored to uh, pretty much original structure and original columns this is really really pretty up here i like this now the staircase has an interesting story the spiral staircase was removed in the 1960s because they wanted more space downstairs, apparently for a gift shop, because the hotel was losing money. So this spiral staircase that you're seeing here is brand new. This one was built five or six years ago. The builder is uh, Lane Smith, or the contractor. And apparently this was only $260,000 for this double helical, uh, double set of stairs. Pretty cool. Steel inside there and then laced with wood. Looks like it's a mix of uh, maybe dug fur. I'm not sure what else. Nice craftsmanship. Beautiful, beautiful work. Let's go take a look outside, shall we? Oh man, look at this view. Holy cow. Now this would be really fun. Can you imagine this in 1915 on July 4th weekend when this place opened? That's cool. Look at that siding on the bottom level. I don't remember seeing that. And look at the view, this lake, these mountains. This is one of my favorite parks. I had no idea what I was getting in for. Four or five foot overhangs, definitely reminds me of Switzerland right there. Looks like some kind of bird nesting up there in the, uh, in the rafters. No insulation when the park was built too. Strictly uh, steam heat apparently when it was first built. Another thing that's interesting is seeing the uh, life safety health upgrades. I noticed on the inside, let's go back and take a look at it, but the, um, oh, that's cool. Look at that outside corner detail, piece of metal there. I wonder if originally when these were built, these were either mited or butted and they put these on to uh, weather seal a little better and protect those, those vulnerable edges on the siding. I have to think some of the siding's original, but it's hard to say for sure. Hopefully you're able to pick it up. It's really bright out. Some gorgeous construction though. Let's go back inside. I want to point out the um, fire sprinkler system while we're, while we're back in here. Here we go. You can see right here. Looks like two or three inch copper where you've got a stub out for a fire sprinkler right there. But what's cool about it is the copper is almost the same color as the uh, as the logs. So it really blends in. Unfortunately, the PVC piping doesn't blend in too well. But the copper definitely does. I wonder how many years this went without any fire sprinkler protection. I'm assuming quite a few years went by. I didn't hear any stories about fire. I heard some stories about flooding. And you can see some of the steel here. This was certainly in addition, my guess is there's a steel beam underneath that plaster. And then there's some places downstairs. Oh, 
Maybe here there's steel as well hidden in there. Hard to say for sure. I see cracking on those beams, so they look like they're true wood. But I saw a bunch of places that had faux beams that were probably steel hidden in there. This is the uh, artist John Frey and his signature on these paintings that were around the building in various locations. The original builder commissioned him to do paintings throughout the building. And there's a story that the uh, original builder commissioned John to do at least a hundred a month of these to decorate the building. Now check that, this out, the Ptarmigan dining room. This is really a picture of craftsmanship right here. Look at these gorgeous beams. Got a big vaulted two-story area here. And the story is that the railroad builders that were building trestle bridges in the early 1900s built this. And I absolutely love the steelwork. It's fabulous in here. See that? All those connecting pieces. <laughs> really cool with the giant fireplace at the end. Now the story was that there was a lowered ceiling in here for a long time so that they could keep the building warm in the winter time because I think that they actually were using this uh, not just summertime when it first was built, but currently the hotel only operates 100 days a year and then they're blowing out the pipes the rest of the year to keep it from freezing in the winter time. What a gorgeous ceiling. Beautiful. We've got a Lake Flato project going that kind of reminds me of the ceiling right here. But I want to show you this display. Here's the Great Northern Railway. That's the, uh, the guy that actually built this place originally. Some cool old pictures. Check this out. Hotel staff from the 1920s with their leader hose in and a very Swiss looking outfit. Uh, really trying to compete with Switzerland and Europe for people's summertime vacation dollars. This is cool too. This is a reproduction of an engineering drawing and I love seeing this. Look. Out of the base of the uh, uh, of the building, hard to tell what these are made of. Whether there's actually, oh no, here it is. It shows it. 24 by 24 by 17 stone, and then on top of the stone is a looks like a oh yeah, here it is. It's labeled a six by six, and then a little note: all sills to be painted two coats of carbolic carbolicol. I don't know what that is, but this is long before pressure treated woods were being used. Pretty cool to see the engineer do that. And check out this ad from the Saturday Evening Post. Glacier National Park, America's vacation paradise. Great Northern Railway. I didn't catch the year that the National Park Service took over, but uh, this was originally all private money. So cool to see some of these details. Okay, my tour guide pointed out this painting. I don't know if this is also a John Frey, but this is uh, Four Men. This was quite an old painting, at least a 100-year-old painting. And there's a buck out there in the water with a nice-looking rack. And what's this man reaching for? His camera. <laughs> the story is that this painting was altered. If you see four guys around a table 100 years ago, and you see an, a big old elk or a buck whitetail coming through the water you're not reaching for your camera you're reaching for your gun and so the story is for politically correct reasons this painting on the outside of the dining room area here was altered to remove the gun and to add a camera which is precariously perched on who knows what that was maybe a rum barrel or <laughs> who knows Okay, let's see if we can check out one of the rooms, but as we're on the way to the rooms, I want to point out that the wood, you can see a lot of the saw marks on the wood, uh, and most of this wood was sawed, uh, was milled locally here, basically on site, and it's only the giant timbers that you're seeing uh, that are structural timbers that are holding up the place that are actually uh, brought in from out of state. They were from Washington State and the railroad brought them down here or over here I should say in this case to Montana. What's Washington State to Montana? Maybe uh, 600, 800 miles, something like that. This is one of the uh, one of the rooms in here. This would be the lap of luxury. Apparently people in this day would go to Switzerland often on vacation and to the hotel air wanted people to come here instead Check out that old-fashioned sink. That looks like it's been refurbished. Maybe original. 
Excuse me. And I heard these old clawfoot tubs here too. Look at that. Beautiful. I believe these are original and got refurbished. The old linoleum floors. I had this in the house. I loved it. I don't know about the windows. I heard these were replaced, but they look like they might have been refurbished. Pretty tiny, but awfully, awfully pretty. Quick sneak peek in the luxury room. Check out the fireplace here. Obviously not being used today and a little bit bigger of a room. Electric heater on the side. You've got a uh, fan in the corner to keep you cool. Great refurbishment. Beautiful. It's connected to another room. And a little nicer shower. Look at this. Beautiful. The luxury accommodation room. I love it. Paneling looks awesome. $471 a night. But out this door is a view of the mountains would be my guess. Check that out. That's a heck of a view. Okay, so we're in the basement uh, section now. This is a walkout basement. And my understanding is that they had massive concrete piers that are underneath these timbers. And I'm not sure how they did it, but they also added quite a bit of steel. This obviously is not <laughs> original to the building. And then it looks to me like there's a moment frame in here too. This wood beam here is a faux beam all the way over to that faux beam. And so I'm thinking that there's steel in there and you can also see the, uh, the bolts right there. <laughs> so there's definitely some steel in there. And my assumption is that that was added during that renovation. It was not that long ago to uh, shore up the place and make this place more structurally sound, but they did a nice job hiding. I gotta say these box beams, I'm sure fool 99% of the people walking by. All right, friends, thanks for watching this special vacation edition of the Build Show. What a gorgeous old building. And if you want more gorgeous old buildings and even new buildings that will look like old buildings, go check out my friend Brent Hall. He is shooting videos on buildshownetwork.com and I'll also link on his Instagram so you can go follow him. Amazing, amazing builder, master carpenter based out of Fort Worth, Texas. But if you're not a Build Show subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. All right, so we're in Glacier and we were moving campsites and we stopped for lunch on the side of the road. And guess who I met? Dylan recognized me by my logo on the truck. Dylan, you've seen my videos? Oh yeah, big fan of The Build Show. That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. And you just built a house, is that what you said? I did, yeah, just built a house, got done in February. It was the undertaking of a lifetime, but couldn't have done it without the help of Matt. Yes, Learned that's so awesome, Dylan. What'd you do in your house? Anything special from um, my videos that you've seen? Yeah, totally. A bunch of things. We did uh, three inches of rock wool, raised heel On the outside of the house? On the outside, exterior nice. rock wool. Fantastic. Um, raised heel trusses. I mean, the list goes on and on. We tried to have it be as much of a green build as we could. So awesome, man. Dylan, thanks for coming by, brother. Yep. Appreciate it. Yep. All right, guys, we'll see you later.